In September of 2022, we did a Viking Rhine River cruise. The cruise started in Amsterdam and went down the Rhine to Basel, Switzerland. The trip is actually only one way, but we did a double trip and went back up the Rhine. We got the chance to stop here in Strasbourg twice. One day it was rainy and the other day was a 90 degree torrential downpour. Today's tour buses look more like an airplane cockpit. We saw our refugee camp just outside the central city area. This is due to the Ukrainian war. One time we were bused from the dock to the city, but the second time we got to ride the train system. But to get there, we walked through a park area in the newer section of the city. I had a flashback to John Lennon's psychedelic roles. Constant reminders of the last war and note of their liberation. Strasbourg is the formal seat of the European Parliament. Sitting so close to the German border, you can see and you can feel the cultural and architectural blending of the German and French influences. The city started its life as a Roman camp and was first mentioned in 12 BC. The city of Strasbourg, which grew from that camp, celebrated its 2000th anniversary in 1988. But this area has been populated since the Middle Paleolithic era. Between 362 and 1262, Strasbourg was governed by the bishops of Strasbourg. In 1262, the citizens violently rebelled against the bishop's rule and Strasbourg became a free imperial city. It became a French city in 1681, but in 1871, after the Franco-Prussian War, the city became German again, until 1918, which was the end of World War I, when it reverted back to France. But then, in 1940, along with the rest of the Alsace region, it was annexed by the Nazis and was under German control again, until the end of World War II in 1945, when it again became, and still is, a French city. Strasbourg played an important part in the Protestant Reformation. It was one of the first centers of the printing industry because Johannes Gutenberg and his printing system was developed here. In 1605, the world's first newspaper was printed here. Also, Gutenberg was a goldsmith. It's always good to have a plan B. The Gutenberg Square has a really nice statue to them, and it's, this is a nice area. There's all kinds of cafes around and places you can buy things, it's souvenirs and all that. And it has a merry-go-round and some guy who's blowing these huge bubbles that kids could actually get into. As I have said in previous videos, this area has some of the best signs. The city has had some dark days and some good years. In its 2,000 years of history, massacres, plagues, reigns of terror by rulers, foreign sieges, the Nazi era, allied bombings, you know, the whole European history. Under the Reformation in 1521, the cathedral became a Protestant church until after the city went back to France in 1681, and then it was reverted back to a Catholic church. Between 1870 and 1945, a relatively short span of its millennial life, Strasbourg Cathedral suffered heavily during the three wars, but it still remains standing. It's Gothic Cathedral Notre Dame 
features daily shows from its astronomical clock and sweeping views of the Rhine River from partway up its tower. Actually, that will be in a separate video, but it was the walk up this 200-foot tower that convinced me I didn't want to do the 500-foot tower walk in Cologne, so it's a good thing we stopped here first. During the Franco-Prussian War of 1870, projectiles set fire to the roofs of the nave and the choir stalls. During World War I, the cathedral continued to operate relatively normal, but most of the bells were removed. The Second World War was a difficult one for the building because during the annexation of Strasbourg into the Third Reich, Hitler was considering turning it into a national monument which would have involved dismantling the huge stained glass windows for safekeeping. The priceless windows disappeared until 1945 when the Americans found them tucked away in a salt mine in Germany. Anyone who saw the movie Monuments Men will have an idea of what happened there. It's actually amazing how this city, at least the Old Town section, looks considering the Allied bombings during World War II. In total, from 1940 to its liberation in 44, Strasbourg suffered no less than 13 Allied bombing raids. The worst raids were the American raids, which took place in August and September of 44. And the U.S. bombers largely missed their targets, which was the Messerschmitt factory on the outskirts of the city. And the bombs devastated the medieval heart of Strasbourg. Most of the destroyed buildings in that central area were rebuilt after the war in their original style. We would have loved to have stayed here for a few nights. Must be really nice at night. There's a lot of things here to see and a lot of history. Places to watch other people just milling around, but this type of tour just doesn't allow for that. Although we could have stayed in the city after the planned tour for at least a couple of more hours, the rain and wind was so bad that umbrellas were useless, and the rain was hitting us like at a 90 degree angle, so we were all pretty wet. But this would be a great place to visit.